1980s when I first heard a friend playing this slow version of Neil Sedaka's iconic song, I knew I had to learn it. But with 45 measures spanning six octaves filled with complex chords and intricate timing, it really stretched my music reading ability. I'd taken about six months of piano lessons when I was young and learned how to read music. But over the years, I'd played mostly by ear and chords, so my sight reading skills weren't all that great. This marvelous arrangement of breaking up begins in the key of G with just one sharp, and I was doing fairly well learning to play it. But at measure 32, my progress came to an abrupt halt. The song had switched to the key of A flat, which has four flats, and it took me so long to get through the measure that I was having trouble forming any muscle memory. So I decided to sketch a picture of a keyboard and mark the keys to be played. This example shows three notes in the left hand, which I marked with X's, and four notes in the right hand, which I marked with circles. Five out of the seven notes were flatted, which is why I was having so much trouble. Now I had something on paper that I could practice without having to convert notes to keys in my head each time. I did the same for the remaining notes, and All Can Play was born. All Can Play is a play-by-picture system that allows beginners to play piano without reading music and experienced players to convert harder songs to pictures, becoming better music readers in the process. Every key to be played is marked on stacked keyboard diagrams that flow down the page. It's similar in appearance to falling note music, but it doesn't go away after you play it. Each note of a song is indicated by finger letters, large black letters for the left hand, small red letters for the right hand, T's for thumbs, P's for pointers, M's for middles, R's for rings, and L's for littles. Octaves, which are repeating groups of white and black keys, are shaded in order using the seven colors of the rainbow. Since octaves all look alike, this helps tremendously in knowing where you should be playing, especially in songs like this one that span six or more octaves. The green octave starts on middle C, which is designated C4, the fourth C on a full-size 88 key keyboard. You can download a free kit from the All Can Play website to rainbowize your keyboard to match. Although the original music starts with a solid sound, I like to begin measure one with an arpeggio. An arpeggio is a series of notes played in order either up or down the keyboard. Imagine strumming strings on a harp which rhymes with ARP. Starting on the G key in the orange octave, we'll follow the black and red arrows up the keyboard with a left hand little, pointer, thumb, followed immediately by the right hand thumb, pointer, ring, and little. We'll quickly play the entire arpeggio on the one count then hold it for and two, like this. One and two. Notice that the song starts with a G major seven chord. Chords are groups of notes generally used to add harmony to the melody of a song. If needed, you can learn all about chords and download a free chord constructor chart from the All Can Play website. These long black lines under the left-hand finger letters are called ties. A tie tells us to hold a key down, in this case, for the entire measure. Breaking up was written in 4-4 four, four time, which means each measure gets four beats and a quarter note gets one beat, which will count as one and. If you'd like to learn more about timing, see the reading music lesson on the All Can Play website. Normally we'd count and play steadily like a metronome, placing an emphasis on the one count, which is called a downbeat. One and two and three and four and. But the tempo for this song is rubato, which allows for more freedom of expression. 
Rather than strictly counting, the best way to get a feel for the tempo of this song is to listen to Neil Sedaka playing and singing it online. You tell me that you're leaving I can't believe it's true This wedge under the right hand little finger is an anchor. It's an all complace symbol that tells us to fix or anchor our finger on the key as it will be played several times, including, as we'll see, into the next measure. That way we won't prematurely move our hand out of position and have to search for the key later. Following the arpeggio, we'll hold the tied left hand keys then play and hold the tied right thumb to the end of the measure. The lyric U occurs on a lighter upbeat, in this case an and count. So we'll play it more gently than if it began the measure. From the beginning, it sounds like this. A small numbered circle above a finger letter means to repeat it the indicated number of times. This first one also has a play twice reminder box. So we'll play the right little twice on the D key in the blue octave to cover the lyrics, tell me, then twice more for the lyrics, that you're. We'll want to use the rightmost pedal to help sustain the sound of the repeated D key. Without the pedal, the sound dissipates quickly. Holding the pedal down helps fill in the sound between finger strikes. This song ranges over six octaves, so we'll definitely want to use the pedal to sustain sounds when our hands shift to new positions. If you're not sure how to use the pedal, check out the pedaling lesson on the All Can Play website. Here's measure one from the top. Measure two begins with a chord change to B flat seven. The timing starts regularly, one and two and. In standard notation, each of these counts corresponds to an eighth note. A span symbol tells us how many keys we need to stretch to cover the interval or distance between two keys. Spans are measured in white keys because white keys are evenly spaced. In this case, our left hand little and thumb will be playing on black keys, but they'll stretch the equivalent of seven white keys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Learning to reach a span by feel is a valuable skill because with one finger in place, you can reach the second key without looking, which allows you to keep your eyes on the music. By itself, a seven span interval sounds unpleasant or dissonant. If what you play sounds harmonious, it likely means you've stretched one key too far to an octave. Combining both hands, the measure starts with a heavier downbeat on the lyric leave, followed by a lighter upbeat on the lyric in. Pinching is a technique for replacing one finger with another without looking, so you can keep your eyes on the music. In this case, our right middle finger will move towards and replace our right little finger on the blue D key, while the little finger moves to the blue G key. Here's the pinch in slow motion. In most cases, pinching fingers won't actually have time to touch. So the goal is to aim to the key that the replaced finger has just left. After the pinch, we'll play the new notes, anchor the middle finger for future notes, and play the ring finger. In the bottom half of measure two, timing continues with three and. But for the fourth beat, in the same amount of time as we'd count four and, we count 4 A and D. In standard notation, this corresponds with the timing of four 16th notes. The left hand starts with an octave or eight span. Octaves are very common, so they aren't notated with a span number. This one stretches over the orange and yellow octaves on the E flat keys, which are tied to the end of the measure. The original sheet music used a symbol called a fermata to specify that the right hand key should be held slightly longer than the three count. We'll play all three keys together, 
Then shift our thumb to the green D key while holding the tight pointer and middle fingers. If holding the tight middle finger on the blue D and reaching down an octave to the green D is too much of a stretch, use the pedal to sustain the tied notes and play the green D by itself. On the lyric cant, the chord changes to E flat major seven. To enhance the sound of this or any chord, rather than striking its keys all at once, slightly strum them as you would on a guitar. Here's E flat major seven struck, then strummed. The difference is subtle, but instead of a heavy block chord, it's a little softer and more sophisticated. Think of it as a very fast arpeggio. Once again, we're told to hold the keys slightly longer than the timing. In this case, a very short 16th note. However, taking full advantage of the freedom of expression offered by a rubato tempo, Neil Sedaka holds the lyric can't much longer than that. Following the chord, we'll hold the tied thumb and little while playing the middle finger twice, followed by the ring. Here's measure two from the top. If you're memorizing this song, you'll definitely want to look at your hands and the keyboard to form a visual memory to aid your muscle memory. But if you're sight reading, you want to keep your eyes on the music as much as possible, because every time you look away, you're more likely to lose your place. In addition to spans and pinches, check out the sight reading lesson for other techniques to keep your eyes on the music. Regarding fingering, hand sizes and finger lengths differ. So if you prefer, cross out and replace the displayed finger letters with ones that work best for you. But to build muscle memory, it's important you use the same fingering each time. Moving on, if we were to cover each of the 45 measures like the first two, this tutorial would last for hours. Instead, I'll point out some of the trickier parts, and you can have fun with the rest. In measure three, our right hand plays a nine span, which, like a seven span, sounds unpleasant. Fortunately, it sounds much better when we add in the middle keys. The highest note is perceived as a melody, so if your hand isn't wide enough to stretch a nine span, you can omit the lowest note, in this case, the thumb. Or you could strum the chord from bottom to top and use the pedal to sustain the lowest key after your thumb has left it. In measure six, our right hand will play a multi-octave arpeggio. However, this is not a standard arpeggio like we saw in measure one. To save room, All Can Play uses the arpeggio concept to group successive keys into a single keyboard picture, which also makes them easier to see and play. Starting on the yellow A key, the first group consists of four 16th notes counted two A and D. The second group covers the same keys, starting on the green A, counted 3 A and D. The last group starts on the blue A, but has only three notes, counted 4 and und. This is an eighth note triplet. A triplet consists of three notes played in the time of two notes. In our case, two eighth notes are counted 4 and, so we count the three notes of the triplet 4 and und in the same amount of time. The overall effect is that we play the first two arpeggio groups quickly and slow down slightly on the last group. Normally when playing a series of notes up the keyboard, we'd cross our thumb under our fingers to smoothly continue the run. However, this arpeggio is so swift there isn't time. Instead, we'll need to flick our ring finger into our palm to get it out of the way of our rising thumb. Here's the finger movement in slow motion. Practice slowly and steadily to make sure there are no sound gaps between arpeggio groups. Here's what you don't want.
Try counting steadily from 1 to 11 to help eliminate gaps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Gradually increase speed until your hand can move up the keyboard in one continuous motion with your fingers coming down on the appropriate keys. At the same time, hold down the pedal to help sustain the sounds. As the arpeggio ends, there's no time to linger, so you'll immediately need to shift your right hand down to play the first keys in measure 7. Practice this by playing just the last arpeggio group, then aiming your thumb to G flat in the green octave. In measure 8, we encounter our first blend. In standard music, this corresponds to a grace note, which appears as a small note that should be quickly blended into a standard note. In Alkan play, a small arrow points from the grace note, which will play very quickly, to the standard note, which will play for the designated length of time. To play this blend, we'll literally slide our right pointer finger off the blue B flat key into the blue B key. At the same time, our ring finger plays the indigo D key. We'll follow the blend with our middle and little fingers on C and E, then back to our pointer and ring on B and D to the count of an eighth note triplet, three and und. Grace note blends add excitement to the music, and it was this particular passage that really made me want to learn this song. Measure 32 begins with a key change from G with one sharp to A flat with four flats. The song plunges into the red octave, heralding the key change with a deep, rich sound. Even if you're sight reading, you'll want to look towards the lower octaves to reduce your chances of hitting the wrong keys. The sight reading lesson on the All Can Play website has two techniques that can help. The first we've already covered, training yourself to reach an octave span by feel. That way, if you can reliably get your thumb to the orange E flat, you'll be able to play the red E flat without looking. The second technique is spotting keys. When you need to reach a distant key, the trick is to spot or glance at the key, then look away as your hand moves toward it. This allows you to return your eyes to the music or your other hand more quickly. The strange thing is, if you continue to look at the key while trying to play it, you'll likely overshoot and play the wrong key. As you may have noticed earlier, to prevent having to expand an entire keyboard column for just a few wide-ranging notes, Alcan Play inserts gaps between octaves. In measure 34, this gap allows notes to be displayed in both the orange and indigo octaves. In this case, when the gap ends, our right little finger switches from the indigo D flat to the blue A flat. But since the two keys line up vertically, our first instinct might be to play the D-flat again. This pinch reminds us to shift our little finger down to replace the pointer on the blue A-flat. In addition to the ending of the song, which I'll play for you at the end of this tutorial, page 7 includes a brief history of Breaking Up is Hard to Do, which became a top 40 hit three times by three separate artists. You'll find links to each of their performances including two by Neil Sedaka himself. This chart relates standard music notes and triplets to the respective timing counts. Beneath it are links to the All Can Play Piano website. Finally, there's a guide to taping and folding the seven song pages together for easy use. Depending on your experience level, it may take weeks or even months to master this wonderful song. But if you like it as much as I do, it will be worth the effort. Enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm.